The last new adept reward from Grandmaster Nightfalls this season is finally here. The Solar Precision Bow pre Astyanax 4. Or as we are dubbing it, the pre Nastyanax. Now guys, a lot of people are overlooking this weapon. But let me just say, this bow is nasty. And dare I say, the best legendary bow in the entire game. Now similar to Warden's Law, that was recently dropping. In terms of PvE, I think this one is up there for sure. Again, everyone looked at Warden's Law and was like, ah, it's probably gonna suck. And then suddenly, it's the best DPS hand cannon in the game. Now keep in mind, neither one of those Nightfall weapons really are that special inside of PvP. Warden's Law is okay, but a lot of people just don't like the way it feels due to its inconsistency and being a two-round burst hand cannon. Pre-Asian Axe is a bow. And like I say with all bows when it comes to PvP, you're either a bow user or you're not. That's not to say it doesn't have great potential inside of PvP. Believe me, there are some things on here that make this a nasty bow to have. But it definitely shines more so for my PvE players. Now starting out, let's compare pre Asian Axe at base versus our other legendary bow options as there is a lot of competition. On paper, its base stats are actually surprisingly low. Pretty much every other precision bow beats it out in most stats except for airborne effectiveness, which is normally high in adept weapons. With that being said though, its stats aren't terribly low, typically only falling a few points behind other bows. And since the Grandmaster Nightfall can drop the adept version of this, you can make up for those stats when fully mastered worked. On top of that, you have access to adept mods. Now, the one stat that I personally really care about when it comes to bows is draw time. For this bow and other precisions, they sit at a base of 684. Now, the lowest possible draw time you could get on a precision bow was 576. This is the first time that we've been able to bring a precision bow and its base draw time below 576. Because of the adept draw time mod, we're actually able to bring this thing down to a whopping 540. Now this is only 40 milliseconds longer than the minimum draw speed of a lightweight bow. And even though lightweight bows have had updates time and time again, personally, I still prefer precision bows. The other aspect that really makes pre X stand out from the rest are its perk options. And there are some fantastic options here. In our left side column, we have Perpetual Motion, Archer's Tempo, Perfect Float, Shoot to Loot, and Line Action and Range Finder. To the right, you're going to find Incandescent, Collective Action, Successful Warm-Up, Opening Shot, Explosive Head, and Precision Instrument. For PvE, Archer's Tempo stands out the most as it grants you a 0.75 times draw time multiplier for 3 seconds when landing precision hits. Which when we already have a bow so fast, this perk is just the cherry on top. You are reaching lightweight speeds at this point. Now for PvE, Shoot to Loot may also be useful as it can pick up heavy and special ammo from further away as well as orbs of power. Keep that in mind, guys. That was an update to Shoot to Loot not that long ago, where yes, it can pick up orbs of power. Now, for those wondering, can Incandescent with Shoot to Loot proc to pick up orbs? The answer? Unfortunately, no. I reached out to fellow members of our Discord who do have this role, and they've stated that no, Incandescent will not pick up the surrounding orbs. However, it will pick up bricks of ammo. Something about Incandescent being a separate entity, so it can't pick up orbs. Now, the reason why we were curious about this is because on Wolf Tome Bow, Shoot to Loot does proc with Dragonfly, but it doesn't appear that we get that level of synergy with Incandescent and Shoot to Loot, at least not for orbs. Now, another perk we actually liked here was Enlightened Action. This is a good neutral game perk, as it grants you both increased reload speed and handling, just from dealing damage. Now, moving over to our right side. In my opinion, guys, and this is the perk that I always go for on Strident Whistle, and that is Incandescent. It is a fantastic perk. Great for AoE damage, you can combine it with Solo 3.0, which with Solo 3.0, that obviously enhances it with things like Ember of Ashes. However, you also have Explosive Head. This slightly increases our damage, just like Explosive Payload, and of course it has that AoE effect. Now the other perk is Precision Instrument. Now this is a pretty good perk inside of PvE, especially when you pair it with Archer's Tempo, as you're going to be going for crits anyways, and simultaneously dropping that draw speed, all while building stacks of Precision Instrument, which can go all the way up to 25% more damage. This is at six stacks. Now keep in mind guys, even though I do like precision instruments, there's not a lot of room here for error when it comes to landing those consecutive shots. It's 1.25 seconds for other weapons 
and 2.1 seconds for bows, which I know is a pretty good stretch, but other weapons are more manageable to follow up with that other consecutive shot. Whereas this being a bow, not only are you actually having to find the next target to land a crit on, but then you have to wait for the draw speed, go for the perfect draw, then release for full damage, yada yada. You get the point, guys. It's not necessarily the easiest perk here to synergize. Granted, you see my bow gameplay here, guys. I'm more of a sloppy bow user in general. Precision instrument, if you're really trying to get the most of it, requires a level of finesse. Now, we also have three origin traits to choose from. You've got stunning recovery, where stunning a champion partially refills your magazine and triggers health regeneration. It also improves recovery for a short duration. Really, really good this season, guys, considering we have anti-barrier bow. But bows normally do find its way into rotation in our artifact every single season. And again, this isn't something just applicable to one type of champion. It's all champions. Now, the second origin trait is Vanguard's Vindication, which grants us a small amount of health on final blows. Again, not that great. I do think that PV stunning recovery is much stronger. But lastly, we have Wild Card. Now, we've talked about this origin trait a lot, guys. Essentially, this is a Cassoid origin trait that spawns Telesto Bolts on Final Blows. It states right here that Final Blows of this weapon have a chance to create experimental submunitions at the target's location, which are those mini Telesto Bolts. Now, this is a good option on a bow. I love it on all of our other weapons, the Ritual Hand Cannon especially. But every time you land a single kill, you're spawning these crystals. On top of that, if you land a kill on orange bar enemies or higher, you will spawn in three of those Telesto Crystals. Now, keep in mind, it is a detonation effect. It requires the enemy to actually step on those bolts in order to do damage to them. But considering you have enemies that are constantly rushing you, you would be surprised how often it actually helps. Now, the role that I landed on, that was my god role, that I am ecstatic about, was this one right here. It came with elastic strength, fiberglass, arrow shaft, archer's tempo, and incandescent with a draw time masterwork. And when I apply an adept draw time mod, we are hitting that 540 draw time speed. This is currently my favorite PV bow in the game outside of exotics. Again, stride and whistle for the longest time was that bow for me. But a Stianax has replaced stride and whistle completely. Now, in terms of raw damage, it's right in line with other energy precision bows, dealing 21,000. 503 per crit and 14,336 per body against red bar ads. Now versus Carl, we're dealing 12,902 per crit and 8,602 per body. Now when we talk about bows, I think the subjective nature is very important. How does it feel? How does a 540 draw speed on a precision bow feel with Archer's Tempo? Fellas, it feels as good as you would imagine. The speed is allowing us to dish out more and more damage, far outpacing normal precision bows. We're shooting just slightly slower than lightweights, but dishing out a lot more damage. On top of that, precision bows still feel better to me. And this one feels just as accurate as any other precision, but just as consistent and just as hard hitting. And with incandescent, the ad clearing capabilities is beautiful. Now to get the most out of this bow, if you are wanting to pair it with Solo 3.0, make sure and rock it with the Solo subclass and rock Ember of Torches. This makes you and nearby allies radiant from power and melee attacks, as well as Ember of Empyrean, to be able to infinitely extend the duration of radiant as long as you're getting solar weapons or ability final blows. Now you can also pair this with Monochromatic Maestro, which is an artifact mod that will give you another 10% weapon damage bonus. We've also got Rapid Fire Ranger, which can weaken distant targets from landing rapid precision hits. And as far as exotics go, actually Path of Burning Steps is a good option for this. Foe Tracer is also good. Oath Keeper is a no-brainer for my bow users. And Man on Battle Harmony, Sanguine Alchemy. But keep in mind, this bow is really good on its own. You don't really have to go out of your way to find an exotic to pair here. You can simply use it with whatever in-game build that you're currently using. Now, moving into PvP. Again, I am not the biggest fan of bows in PvP, but we cannot overlook the fact that it is the fastest draw time precision bow in the game. Now, there's not going to be any one-hit kill potential with this bow, at least not something that's easily activated, as in we don't have something like Kill Clip. With that being said, though, this is a bow that can be extremely annoying to go against inside of PvP, simply because because the follow-up shots will be so fast. If you like to sit in the back of the map and literally just wait for the opponent to peek their head, this is a bow that will allow you to use that play style in one of the most annoying ways possible while still maintaining that consistency. Now for PvP, you don't have to go the route of using incandescent. Considering precision instrument and collective action really aren't gonna change the game in terms of damage, this leaves other options. One of them being opening shots, which definitely helps out with accuracy. This is a really good part, guys. And again, 
If you just peek in long enough to land that one shot, that is an annoying combination. Considering the draw time is so fast with Archer's Tempo. Now, before you ask, can you reproc opening shot for every single shot? It does have a 3.1 second cooldown. So keep that in mind, guys. Now, the other perk that I really like inside of PvP is successful warm up. That in combination with Archer's Tempo and a very fast draw time, that is the combination that I fell in love with on the bow under your skin. Now, under your skin wasn't an adept weapon. It was craftable, but it wasn't adept. Still a fantastic bow with that Archer's Tempo successful warm up combination, if you so chose. But Astyanax has that combination here. Now, in terms of speed, I wanted to compare this bow to some other top precision bows. With this being a 540 draw time bow, we need to talk frames. Astyanax would actually get a full draw in 33 frames. With Archer's Tempo, this would drop it down to 24 frames now moving to under your skin this void bow has been one of the best bows in the game at the lowest 576 draw time that it can hit it would get to 36 frames to reach that full draw with archer's tempo that would drop it down to 28 now with archer's tempo and successful warm-up this would drop it down to 19 frames to reach a full draw now keep in mind as Stanax can do that as it too has that same trait combination i just prefer incandescent more inside of pve Next, we have Hush, the pinnacle weapon from years ago for Gambit. It has since been sunset, but no one can deny how good Archer's Gambit was on this weapon. But essentially, its perk read that hip fire precision hits grant a massive draw speed bonus for a short duration. Now, Hush's base draw speed was only 684, which would take us 43 frames for a full draw. But with Archer's Gambit, this would bring us down to a whopping 16 frames to reach a full draw. Now, this is even faster than a lightweight bow at 500 draw speed with Archer's Tempo active, which at best would reach 18 frames to reach a full draw. Surprisingly, though, Archer's Tempo plus successful warm up brings us almost on par to OG Hush with Archer's Gambit. You just have to hit fire, which most people inside of PvE don't really like to do unless they're getting rushed. The point I'm trying to make with all of this, guys, is that Astyanax is incredibly fast. And since Hush has been sunset, with the right roll, you have the new fastest precision bow in Destiny 2. Keep in mind though, even with that speed, I still would just prefer Archer's Tempo with Incandescent and that 540 draw time but to each their own. So guys, I know we went into massive depth today. I just wanted to give this bow a fair shake. So many people kind of wrote this bow off for no other reason other than that it's a bow. As the Anax Light Warden's Law brings something to the table that is truly beneficial to our kits. I think it's a weapon worth getting. And I urge everyone out there to go snag a few rolls this week. And for my folks running the Nightfall, we do have a Nightfall guide. We go over how to skip the towers, how to really optimize this Nightfall, and get to those 15-minute completions. We'll link that video in the description below if you want to check that out. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.